Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to cut around various shapes using different tools. So I've got um, a small U gouge, a large U gouge, a hang eater which is a knife, and a large V. I'm going to cut three squares to start with, and then I'm going to show you how to cut these smaller shapes. So start off with I'm going to cut around the edge of this square and then inside. So when I print this if I use black ink I'll get a, a black outline square. So I normally follow the outline first. Now when I'm doing um, very accurate work I often use this finger as a sort of guide when I'm cutting. This is the small one millimeter U. I'm using my file gouges. I've done another video about all the different tools that I use. Now these um, U gouges, the file ones, are very nice for doing straight lines. They just basically want to go in a straight line, and they will cut um, very even width of line. So even if your drawing's a bit wonky like this one, you can sort of straighten it up and neaten it up as you carve. So I've gone around the outside. Um, now the tricky bit is doing the middle because when you get towards the corner, you don't want to overshoot. You don't want to take out a chunk of that line. So you just start right in the corner. You can go right up to that edge and just slow right down. And when you get there, just take your tool away and brush away the little bit of lino. Now you can do this. I'm using traditional grey lino. I've coloured it in blue so you can see what I'm doing a bit better. So now I'm coming into this corner in the same way. Brush it away. Um, you can't do that with other other materials like vinyl. They, they don't, they're not brittle. The nice thing about the traditional lino, one of the nice things is that it's brittle, so it, these little bits just break off, brush away. Now, this is how I used to work, using the small U, and then I would take a larger tool to clear away the middle bit. And again, you can just Go up to, you don't even have to go right up to the edge now, you go up to almost to the edge and break it off. And it doesn't really matter if it's a bit messy inside, as long as you've gotten deep enough. Again, I'm slowing right down to that edge. And if necessary, you can go back with a small tool and just tidy up those edges again. Now that's how I used to do it and um, it's a good way if you're starting out because this little one millimeter U gouge is very nice and easy to control. Um, but what I found was that the little bits that got left behind would print and you get a, a little echo line there which can be quite nice but if you want a clean uh, clean area in the middle it can be a bit annoying. Um, so nowadays I tend to carve as much as I can with the bigger tools so I'm going to carve, attempt to carve this one out with a large U. So this is a 5mm U. So again I'm going to go around the edge yeah, and I'm just following the edge with one side of the tool. Now you'll find with this large tool, the line does vary a little bit more in terms of the width of the line, depending on how deep you're carving. The, the deeper you carve, the wider the line's going to be. And I've got, uh, I'm working on a non-slip mat here. This just really helps um, <clears throat> keep.
keep the block in one place while you're carving. So I've gone around the outside, uh, gone a bit wide on this one, so I'm going to go back in and just take a bit more of that. Um, now I'm going to do the inside edge in exactly the same way as that one. But I know that this tool's quite wide, so the corner that I'm starting off in, I'm not going to get a nice square there to start with, but I'm not worried about that yet. So I'm following that left hand edge there, and this time I'm just going to stop at the line, take the tool out. I'm not going to break it off, and then turn the block. I'm going to come at it from this side, and that will slice through. The bit you've just cut off so you'll end up with a nice 90 degree angle there um, and then this bit where it's a bit rounded you can come back from the opposite side square that off and the same and you just keep going around and you've got all the corners done so square this one off This is possibly a bit easier with a medium 3mm tool. But I thought I'd show you this just to show you what's possible with a larger tool. And the advantage of that is it's quicker and also it's a bit easier to clear those bits and you're not going to get any of these little echo lines inside. Okay, so that's the second technique. The last technique I'm going to show you is with the knife, the hangito. Now, I'm not an expert in this. This is a traditional Japanese technique. If you want to learn it properly, you have to go to Japan and study for eight years. But there's lots of YouTube videos. Um, if you look up Japanese woodblock cutting or hangito, how to use a hangito. Um, you'll get a, a more professional uh, instruction, but um, I'm going to show you the way I do it. So this is a right-handed hangito. It's worth knowing that there's right and left-handed ones. So if you're left-handed, make sure you buy a left-handed tool. This one's from a, a fairly affordable set, which I'll put a link to in the description for the video. Um, and you can spend a lot more and get a a really professional one. They come in different sizes. With a hangito you're really just cutting with the very tip of the blade and I find more than other tools it's really important to keep them super sharp. Now the way you hold it is a bit like a dagger with your thumb over the top and you're cutting down but you're holding the tool at a slight angle. So I'm leaning, I'm not vertical, I'm slightly to the right, so I hope you can see that. Um, and you want to cut so you've got the bit you're keeping is to the right of you if you're right-handed. So you're just cutting at a slight angle down to there and stop. And what I would <clears throat> tend to do is cut all four sides first. So this isn't removing any lino yet, we're just making a cut. So we're basically cutting with a hangito. You're cutting two sides of a valley. So here we're cutting the first side. And then you go in and you cut the second side of the valley so you're cutting a, in the opposite direction to the first cut and I tend to hold the tool a bit more like a pen when I do this and you you just cut down and if you've cut deep enough on both cuts you should get a piece that comes out pops out like that. Now this takes a bit of practice to be able to cut a straight line 
Uh, I haven't done it that much, but um, it does definitely, if you practice it, it gets easier. Um, sometimes if you haven't cut deep enough, that little piece won't pop out. Go back, try and get the knife in that first cut, and then pop that one out. There we go. Just be careful when you're picking these bits out because it's very easy to put a nick in in the line. That corner's still stuck in there, so let's try and get that out. There we go. Um, and then you would use um, your U gouge to go back and clear the middle of that. I'm going to use a medium U gouge just to mix it up. So I don't use the hanky too very much for my general line work. I would tend to use the the U the U gouge is actually this medium U gouge is the one I use the most for this. But um, there is one thing that I use the hangito for, and that is cutting tiny little shapes with straight sides, so diamond squares, triangles. It's very useful for that because what you can do if they're small enough is just do the cut around the edge and they all join up in the middle. So let's see if I can get that to work. So I'm holding holding the tool at quite an angle here. Cutting down. Quite hard to see when you when you've done the cuts. It's quite hard to see where they are. There's two sides of a triangle. And the third side, and if you've done it right, that bit should just pop out nicely. Um. So you can do this with any geometric shape that's got straight lines and it's, it's really good for getting right into those points. So you can do stars and stuff. Now this shape's a bit bigger so they may not, the cuts may not join up in the middle let's to see. In the wrong shape there. There we go. Oh, now we're okay. Let's come out. So I've cut that line there. And they will print with really nice crisp edges. So I've got a few other shapes here. I'm going to show you how to cut. And for these, I'm going to use my large V. So here I've got a star shape. Now you can do these with a knife, as I've shown you. Or if you use a large V, you can actually start at the tip of the point of the star come into the middle it's a very badly drawn star but it gives you an idea and depending on the angle that you hold the tool you can get a wider uh, angle on the cut so I'm here I'm lifting my wrist up and cutting more down into the block that gives you a wider cut and then if you want a more narrow angle you bring your wrist down. And then I'll 
which one. And there, you've got your start. And now to do the outside edge, this angle's too wide to do with the, the V. So I, what I probably would do is take my little U-gouge and start in the corner here and come out like that. Um, and this one, I might attempt that with a V. It's probably going to be too wide at the end there. There we go. So I've, I'm alright on that edge, but I've not met that edge. So I'll go back with my U gouge and just widen that bit. Cutting stars is fun. It's a nice thing to practice. Um, and again, I think I've mentioned before, but I can't remember. Um, you can adjust the width of the line as you're cutting. So even if you've drawn the line too thick, you can make it thinner as you cut. Right, so this next one is a sort of boat shape. And I'm going to do this again with a large V. Now when you cut into here you're going to go deeper and then as you come out again you bring your wrist right down to the liner and it should pop out. So I'm going to attempt to cut this in one. Bring my wrist right down. There we go. Um, this next shape, the diamond, you can do again with the large V. And the way you do that is you cut half, spin it round, cut the other half. This is the same thing, except I've got two different shapes either edge so more of a gradual widening cutting at a shallower angle turning it round and then this is a 90 degree angle more or less so I'm coming in really steep to cut that now I've messed that up a bit I've got a dink out of there so I'll just widen that side Um, this next one is a double boat shape, so instead of coming out of the liner just as the tip of the tool comes up, I'm going to go deep again. So you're rolling your wrist up and down. Oops, messed up the end, but you get the idea. And then this one, I'm getting wider and thinner, but also rotating the tool as I go. So this is a really nice technique for doing water and things like that. And you get a little wormy shape. Um, that does take a bit of practice. Um, but it's so satisfying when you get it right. Uh, this one I'm going to use a combination of tools, so I've got a V to do the this end of it. So this is kind of an ice cream cone shape, and then if you turn it around, I'm going to actually cut the other half with a large U, coming in at quite a steep angle to make a little round edge. And then this last shape here, I'm going to show you this again with a large U coming in quite steep. Now, if you bring the tool back slightly and bend it over, you should get a nice semicircle. Do the same thing here. Don't worry if 
if things aren't exactly in the right place because when you print it um, nine times out of ten you won't notice it so um, as a rule I tend to use the biggest tool that I can because I think it gives a cleaner line and more interesting mark uh, it saves you time um, and I think it may not be quite as accurate but um, like I say it doesn't usually matter if something's slightly out. Uh, one other thing I'll show you with a little with a large V I'll just show you you can do a, a triangle with that as well so coming in very steep you cut two sides of the triangle and then you break that over so bring it back bring it all back fold it over and you get a nice triangle and you can do different shape triangles so really you can use all these shapes to um, build up different textures this is a really nice technique for doing fish scales um, and you can vary the size of the marks and the direction you've obviously you can do little dots so this is a large use very versatile tool because you can do these tiny tiny dots just by scraping and then bigger 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 dots and you get some really nice textures so have a play with all your tools see what marks you can make and um, have fun see you next time